Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Anyway, what do we got today? Killer Band-Aids, Trans Insanity, Walmart Popo, and Venus Surgery? <laughs> Welcome back, and we are teetering on 100 subscribers. Congratulations, Sigma Tiger News. We are getting there. We are being recognized as the hottest, juiciest beef online. Well, let's dive right in. What the heck's going on? We've been covering uh, BPAs all up in uh, the school's building, causing everyone cancer. We got PFASs by 3M in the water systems. Well, guess what? You're not safe at all when you get a cut or a scratch because cancer-causing forever chemicals found in Band-Aids where they can get directly into blood through open wounds, report warns. So here we are, people. Everything that's made out of uh, petrochemicals is making you sick. Plastic bottles leaching into the water. We're drinking it. It's all up in our gaff. 65% uh, of bandages contain fluorine, a necessary component of PFASs. PFASs, or forever chemicals, are in cookware. Teflon, firefighting foam, and carpeting. Uh, they uh, raise the risk of thyroid cancer by 56%. All right, bandages from some of the most well-reputed brands, including Band-Aid and, what's this, Curad, never heard of it, contain dangerous levels of forever chemicals, a shock report shows. Testing by a leading watchdog found the chemical fluorine in over two dozen different bandages that can be found in millions of medicine cabinets across the country. PFA, PFASs, PFAS, Chemicals are sometimes used to make adhesives, and investigators believe that believe they are products of the normal manufacturing process. Fluorine, which is also used to make rocket fuel, can lead to skin burns and eye damage, but is most dangerous when inhaled. Dr. Linda Birnbaum, a toxicologist and former head of the National Toxicology Program who co-led the lab testing, said the fact that risky chemicals come in direct contact with open wounds was troubling. <laughs> I dare say. PFAS chemicals can easily enter the bloodstream after a person drinks water or eats food laced with them. Once in the bloodstream, PFASs can lodge themselves within healthy tissue where it can begin to damage the immune system, the liver, the kidneys, and other organs. Uh-oh. Thinks underwear and other period products were found to contain tens to over a hundred parts per million of the compound. So women, uh, check your uh, underwear and your tampons, and maybe your feminine hygiene products, and see if you have any fluorine in them. Oh my gosh. Environment, environmental health watchdogs had 40 bandages from 18 different brands tested for fluorine and detectable levels were found in 26 of them. Consumer watchdog blog Mamavation and Environmental Health News used an EPA certified lab to look for PFAS chemicals in the absorbent pads and adhesive flaps of bandages sold at major retailers, including CVS, Walmart, Rite Aid, Target, and Amazon. The bandages that contain high levels of fluorine above 100 parts per million include brands, listen up, Band-Aid, Care Science, Cura, CBS Health, Equate, that's the Walmart brand, First Honey, Rite Aid brand, Salimo is the Amazon brand, and Up and Up, Target's brand. So all the major retailers are poisoning you uh, while you're thinking you're healing yourself. Dr. Burmom said because bandages are placed upon open wounds, it's troubling to learn that they may be also exposing children and adults to PFASs. It's obvious from the data that PFASs are not needed for wound care, so it's important that the industry remove their presence to protect the public from PFAS and opt instead for PFAS-free materials. There you go. So get rid of your Band-Aids. Uh, watch out for tape, feminine hygiene products, all of it. Okay, so here's a new report. This is exclusive. Most gender-confused children grow out of it. Landmark 15-year study concludes, as critics say it shows... Being trans is usually just a phase for kids. I mean, just like being emo or being uh, the wolf back in like the 90s or early 2000s. 11% uh, of adolescents reported being unhappy with their gender. Sure. 19% who reported unhappiness as a kid no longer expressed it as adults. There you go. Uh, the majority of gender-confused children grow out of that feeling by the time they are fully grown adults, according to a long-term study. Researchers in the Netherlands tracked more than 2,700 children from the age 11 to their mid-20s, asking them every three years of feelings about their gender. Results show 
uh, at the start of the research, around 1 in 10 children, 11% expressed gender non-contentedness to varying degrees. But by the age 25, just 1 in 25, 4% said they often or sometimes were discontent with their gender. The research, researchers concluded the results of the current study might help adolescents to realize that it is normal to have some doubts about one's identity and one's gender identity during this stage, during this age period, and that this is also relatively common. Most kids outgrow their desire to change sex. Here is uh, some stats, age 11, male, female. And you can see it keeps getting reduced over years. At age 11, it is piping hot. At age 16, it is cooling off. And by age 25, it is cold as ice. It comes amid a massive boom in transgender children receiving drugs to change their gender in the US. As critics say, doctors and parents are not challenging young people enough. Yeah, so here's the truth. You're empowering children by saying, hey, you get to choose who you want. We need to affirm these children and like, or else they'll kill themselves. They'll die. No, like the, the, the extreme ones who have been through a ton of trauma, uh, regardless of whether they tra transition, are probably always gonna feel that way because they're living with the memory of being abused or traumatized in some way. And that's typically what the deal is. They need uh, therapy and tons of it. They need someone reliable they can talk to who's not gonna judge them and just express themselves and express all the problems that they have in life. You know, probably with their parents and their peers and their teachers and everyone. Because when you're different, you stand out and uh, a lot of times people don't like things that are different so there's the group of people who are affirm uh, oriented and they say like if you're not with us then you're against us and then there's the other group who are basically like this seems like a little bit much to be pushing this on to children and allowing them uh, agency because we covered a story yesterday about uh, all these kids children labeled uh, by a mayor over in the UK saying that they're planning on having a big spring break and parents should uh, rear their children properly. Well, guess what? Uh, it's a very confusing message. But uh, I think everyone who's, you know, experienced a uh, relatively normal upbringing would realize that a lot of the thoughts you had as a child uh, don't necessarily exist as an adult. Anyway, moving right along. Men who claim to be transgender have won nearly 300 titles in female sports. So it's not ending. Men have taken nearly 900 awards, scholarships, and other honors from female athletes, according to SheWon.org, contrary to the claims of far-left Democratic rep Jerry Nadler. There he is. His pursed lips. Gender-confused men have won nearly 300 titles in female sports, according to the website SheWon.org, but a leading Democratic congressman denies not just biological reality, but this reality as well. Uh, men do not compete in women's sports, far-left New York Democratic congressman Jerry Nadler claimed during a congressional hearing several weeks ago, transgender women may compete in women's sports, he said. However, it is a biological fact and moral truth that no one can change his or her own gender. He said he objected to entering mistruths into congressional record. Republican Congresswoman Harriet Hagman of Wyoming wanted to enter into the record stats on females injured by male athletes as well as stolen titles. She won .org and catalog the stolen titles, proving that men in fact do compete in women's sports. Suzanne Bowdy commented on Nadler's denials in an article for the Washington Stand. That's news to the 25 going on 26 states who've stepped in to stop this madness from overtaking their girls at the pool, track, court, field, and gym, she wrote. If it wasn't happening, then this was sure a monumental waste of legislative time. There are at least 12 examples in 2024 alone of female athletes losing out to men who claim they are women. In 2022 and 2023, there were numerous other examples Male athletes beat out women in sports where physical difference would clearly make a difference, including cross-country running, track, and field, and golf. How about weightlifting? We covered that a couple of weeks ago. Some 55-year-old man uh, entered the competition and just destroyed all of the competitors. Absolutely wrecked them. Uh, calculates uh, that beyond the titles, men have taken nearly 900 awards, scholarships, and honors from female athletes across 428 competitions in 29 sports. The website currently lists 297 stolen first place titles, 263 second place titles, and 253rd place titles. So the women aren't even on the podium anymore. It's literally a bunch of dudes standing up uh, just with their uh, their their masculine uh, bodies and winning, just destroying the competition. All right. Uh, 
This happens in Nadler's home state where a male runner has dominated collegiate track meets. The male, who now goes by the name Sadie Schreiner, won the 200-meter dash while running for Rochester Institute of Technology at the All-Atlantic Regional Championship in early March. Just this weekend, Schreiner won first place and the Genesso Early Season Invitational in both the 200-meter dash and 400-meter dash. That makes the total stolen first place totals to at least 299. Schreiner's wins in early March led to the leader of Houghton University at Christian School in New York to say, enough is enough. Yeah, too many leaders, parents, professional athletes, and people of goodwill have been silent as female athletes are humiliated, silenced, and robbed of hard-earned opportunities. President Wayne Lewis stated that silence is complicit with the fringe agenda that threatens to dismantle girls' and women's athletics. Yeah, so if you are a true, real feminist, uh, you know, at heart, and you believe that, like, you know, women deserve the right to privacy, to engage in sports that are fair, then yeah, jump on board. Because uh, less than 1% of the population is trans, and if you put one trans male on a female sports team, then that sport team dominates. We looked at a soccer thing down in Australia, and they just destroyed the competition. It's not even uh, questionable. But here we go. The Olympics. Scientists refute Olympic Committee's misguided policies on fairness and testosterone levels. Okay, well, let's dive right in. New published report from international researchers marshals every line of evidence in defense of fairness in women's sports. The International Olympic Committee developed its 2021 framework on sex and gender around the concepts of fairness, inclusion, and non-discrimination. This framework leaves it to each sports' governing body to determine how an athlete may be at a disproportionate advantage against their peers. However, they admonish sports organizations against targeted testing aimed at determining athletes' sex, gender identity, and or sex variations. Instead, it's up to each sport to provide confidence to Sorry, confidence that no athlete within a category has an unfair and disproportionate competitive advantage. The IOC's sophistic, sophistic gymnastics to deny sex-based categories in sports prompted 26 researchers from around the world to rebuke the IOC's framework. Their paper published last week in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports in the latest peer-reviewed study providing evidence of the obvious about sex and sports. The researchers reviewed studies from evolutionary and developmental biology, zoology, physiology, endocrinology, medicine, sports, and exercise science and athletic performance results within male and female sports to refute the IOC's position that male athletes warrant no presumption of advantage over female athletes based on biological or physiological characteristics. And there it is. That statement is ridiculous on its face, says Kim Jones, co-founder of the Independent Council of Women's Sports Icons. This is the basic knowledge we all understand and see play out in front of our eyes every day. This new paper is brilliant at laying out how clear the differences are between men and women. There are thousands of difference, differences between male and female development in humans across the entire maturity path that result in these huge performance gaps. Thank you to these 26 scientists who gathered all of this information, categorized it uh, in clear, plain English. Uh, there's overwhelming evidence of male advantage from across different sports, and there's little to be gained from demonstrating this again and again, sport by sport. Yeah. If it happens in one sport, it happens in them all. I mean, what about pool? You know what I mean? That's not even a physical sport, and men are dominating at that. The women won't even play. How about darts? Same thing. It's not really a physical sport. It's not like hockey or football. I'd love to see a transgender male try to get in the NFL. Good luck. But even sports that have copious research into sex differences in the forms have permitted males to compete in the female category. At all levels, competition and age, one path has been through misguided policies based on testosterone levels. Over the last decade, various sports governing bodies, including the IOC and USA Boxing, have attempted to define females through testosterone levels. Those organizations relied heavily on publications by Joanna Harper, a trans-identifying male medical physicist. Uh, the paper consisted of eight self-reports by trans-identifying male recreational runners who had suppressed their testosterone pharmacolo pharmacologically and recalled that they ran slower after doing so. Harper excluded the one respondent who said he ran faster and then concluded that males were suppressing their testosterone could compete fairly in the female category. I mean, there's not enough data in that. Literally self-reporting, just like a handful of people? Well, at least the 26 uh, scientists actually had a look across a range Anyway, while testosterone suppression decreases various measures of anatomy, physiology, and physical performance, those changes are a small fraction of the differences between men and women on these metrics. A testosterone suppressed male will have less muscle mass than his former self, but as a category, testosterone suppressed men remain larger and stronger than women. Further, testosterone suppression does not change attributes like height, bone length, or hip and shoulder width. Yeah, size is a big difference with strength. Anyway, 
Even before puberty, though, males outperform females in athletic competitions. Greg Brown is an exercise physiologist at the University of Nebraska at Kearney and was a co-author on the Lundberg paper. Brown recently published research based on national youth track and field competitions. He found that by age eight, the boys ran faster in their final rounds than the girls did in theirs at race distances from 100 meters to 1,500 meters. Case closed. Illinois trans-identified male pleads guilty after issuing disturbing school shooting and child rape threats. And here is an uh, image of uh, the individual. So heads up, anyone, this article contains direct quotes from federal indictment documents, and it could be disturbing to some people if it isn't already. Trans-identified male in Illinois who threatened to commit a school shooting and rape children has pled guilty to one count of interstate communications with threat to injure. Alexia Willie, also known as Jason Lee Willie, was arrested on August 14th after going on an extended rants listing local children as targets. Previously reported by Redux, Willie was arrested in Perry County, Illinois, after the Springfield area FBI intercepted a live stream on social media they deemed suspicious. In the stream, which was broadcast through networking platform Meet Me, an individual later identified as Willie was seen making a number of disturbing threats towards school and local children, specifically indicating there were plots in progress to commit a school shooting, though no single institution was named. The FBI later determined that Willie had been issuing the threats from the period of March to August 2023, making obscene comments about harming children in the name of transgender rights. So yeah, what's that? That sounds like maps. That sounds like a minor attracted person, which is the new word for pedophile because we don't want to hurt their feelings. Oh my gosh. These monsters who are sexually attracted to children and, you know, dressing up like women, some of them, you know, really like embracing this transgender thing because it's the closest thing they can get to normal uh, in their sick lives. Uh, in March, Willie was observed by a Meet Me user saying, we're out here walking into your school, shooting your children, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be one of them, and the FBI isn't going to stop me, but I'm going to kill your children out here. So this is clearly a cry for help from the sick individual, and thank the Lord above that um, he got picked up and charged and convicted. All right, let's see what they got to say. Person in Tennessee walked into one of your schools and shot up a bunch of your Christian daughters. That's not the last of them. If you don't shut your effing mouth, shut the F up out here. You understand me, Willie said, just weeks after the shooting had taken place. So, obviously a sick, deranged, disturbed individual. There's a lot of transgenders out here that are tired of being picked on. And we're going to go into schools and we're going to kill their effing children out there. And that's the end of it. We're at war. Anyway, in another expletive-filled monologue, Willie also claimed to be a pedophile with intention to sexually assault young girls. I guarantee I'll be in the bathroom raping your Christian daughters, and there ain't nothing you F-A-G-G-O-T-S is, not going to say that word, probably get banned, can do about it. You hear me? Willie said in August 2023. So, see you in hell, Willie. From heaven, of course, because that's where I'm going. Uh, at checkpoint south of Juarez, President Lopez Obrador is going medieval on immigrant travel to El Paso. Did we pay that $20 billion already? Immigration, military pulling migrants off the buses left and right and driving them south in minivans. Yeah, let's go ahead and have a quick look at this. Well, I'd hardly say it's medieval. But, uh, yeah, they're escorting people off the bus and uh, rounding them up and uh, sending them south. Great. Okay, well, at least someone's attempting to do something here to get these people out of the country. All right, Amazon's high-tech fresh grocery stores and cashless, cashierless just walk out program. Yeah, you just walk in, do a little facial recognition. It would uh, observe that basically, like, you know you are going to be shopping and then you walk around i think you have to upload your credit card something like that anyway fail can't trust humans bottom line amazon is ditching its uh just walk out program at its high-tech fresh grocery stores as it remodels the supermarkets amazon first announced the cashierless system in 2018 when it debuted the first 10,400 square foot amazon go grocery store near seattle headquarters the concept vowed to offer a new era of grocery shopping where amazon prime users can scan their member qr code to enter, pick up the items they want, and then just stroll out of the store with a cart full of groceries having never checked or swiped a credit card. Hmm, sounds lovely. But guess what? After a futuristic system of cameras and sensors calculated what grocery shoppers left with, they would later be notified by their Amazon account what the bill came to. Amazon is walking out on the tech, though, telling Bloomberg that it will stop using the program as it remodels existing fresh stores and won't feature it in new locations that will start opening later next year. It declined to comment on when the tech would return. Yeah. Uh, Walmart tried something as well. Uh, basically, they were going to like take a picture of you and whatever credit card you used on that machine. It was going to monitor things that went in and anything that you forgot to check out, it was literally just going to charge to your credit card. 
but that didn't work. So Walmart's making an unusual move to deter theft by providing police a workspace inside one of its stores, Pilot Project in Atlanta. Let's have a look. Nearly every Walmart location has a few common departments, grocery, pharmacy, housewares, but Atlanta store is slated to have one that few others have, a police department. Plans for plans call for the Walmart in Atlanta's Vine City neighborhood to include a designated workspace for law, enforce, law enforcement officers when it reopens in May next year. Wonder why it closed. The location has been closed for nearly a year after officials say shoplifters set fire in the stores to distract from their thieving. Similar incidents occurred in another area in Walmart and Target. So there you go. You know, humans uh, cannot be trusted, especially the ones that act like thugs and think stealing is okay and total disregard for anyone other than their selfish selves. Just in, not Justin Trudeau, but just in, a legal immigrant who tells other illegals to squat in U.S. homes is facing potential federal gun charge, according to New York Post. Internal federal documents say ICE is considering filing charges against Leono, Lono, whatever, Moreno, uh, Leonel. Uh, in one of his Instagram posts, Moreno is touring around a gun store, checking out guns. He mentioned multiple times that only us Americans can get guns. Last week, Moreno was arrested after not following the rules in the Alternatives to Detention program, which is a program saying like, hey, listen, you just strap on a little monitor and behave and you won't have to see any jail time. Well, guess what? They don't listen. He failed to appear at a required check-in. The illegal immigrant is also allegedly under investigation for using his young daughter as a prop, which he has. So uh, this scumbag needs to get deported immediately. How do they not have him in custody? Family of Portland Girl 9 filed $9 million lawsuit against school where she was gang raped in a bathroom by two boys with attackers suspended for just one day. The biggest reason to homeschool is safety because schools aren't safe anymore. I mean, I remember when I was younger, they talked about bringing in like a... Uh, uh, metal detectors into schools. There was like, oh my gosh, like metal detectors, this is really necessary. It's like, yeah, because kids are bringing guns to school all the time. Uh, what happened to that? Mm, some places have armed guards. Well, uh, you know, maybe they should put uh, cameras in the bathrooms. You know what I mean? Not at the toilet stalls, but maybe they should have them there. And they would have caught this. The family of a Portland girl filed a $9 million lawsuit against a public school district after the young girl was allegedly gang raped by two boys in a school bathroom. Last month, the family of the unidentified nine-year-old girl filed a suit in uh, Multnomah County Circuit Court and alleged both the district and nonprofit after-school program failed to protect the youngster. According to the lawsuit in April 2022, the two male students in the program, schools uniting neighborhoods at Scott Elementary School in Northeast Portland, told the girl they would find out where she lives if she didn't tell the staff she needed to use the bathroom. She complied and went to the bathroom as the other students followed her, locked her in a stall, took off her pants, and each forcibly penetrated her, the lawsuit reviewed by Oregon Live stated. As she tried to ward them off, the boys made it impossible for her to escape as they took turns blocking the doors. So it seems like absolutely premeditated attack here. Very well thought out, methodical. Uh, the father of one of the boys reported the incident, and his son and the older boy were suspended for just one day. So the father found out. How? Did he come home and say, hey, dad, check it out. Like, I uh, I had sex in a bathroom today. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, where? And he's like, at school. And he's like, all the kids are, are underage. What are you talking about? Prior to their suspension, instead of getting the police involved, the alleged sexual assault, PPS staff undertook their own internal investigation. Staff also interviewed the girl without telling her parents, family, or any legal representatives, according to the suit. According to the court documents, six days after the alleged assault, the victim's father took her to Randall Children's Hospital for an evaluation. A week after that visit, she was seen as a child abuse program called CARES Northwest, where medical staff were told about the incident and concluded that the history provided was highly concerning for sexual abuse. According to the legal filing since the alleged attack, the young girl has been suffering from pain, trauma, a gap in education, and social anxiety brought on by the incident. This poor little child we pray for, okay? Pray for this little child that she'll be able to get over this trauma, because it is unlikely. Historically, this child is going to be uh, traumatized for the rest of her life. The nine-year-old's father proceeded to transfer his daughter and younger son to another school, which took a month to accomplish and disrupt his children's education. Lassett also noted that alleged instances where the girl was put in a similar situation by male classmates at the school. Prior to the bathroom assault, one of her classmates allegedly touched her genitals over her clothing without her consent during a class with an educator in the room. During another incident, the girl slapped a student after he attempted to kiss the young girl without her consent. What's going on at the school? Sydney Kelly, a spokesman for Portland Public Schools, the Oregon Live, uh, told the Oregon Live, uh, the district learned of these new allegations last week when we received the lawsuit, and we are investigating. We, we are mandatory reporters, meaning we must report any of possible child abuse and neglect. Doesn't sound like you did. 
We take our responsibility with mandatory reports seriously and follow the law. That's what your lawyer told you to do. And uh, please, pl pray for the little girl. All right, we got one last report here. Non-binary Canadian seeks public funding for surgery to create a uh, vagina while preserving penis. So she wants a venus. Uh, Non-binary Canadian is seeking to undergo surgery in Texas to construct a vagina while preserving the penis using a taxpayer funds for the unusual gender affirming procedure. A 33-year-old Ontario resident referred to as KS in court papers was born male but identifies as non-binary and literally a mix of genders according to the National Post. KS, who's experienced gender dysphoria since a teen, also identifies as male dominant and uses a female name. If approved, she would travel to the Crane Center for Transgender Surgery in Austin, Texas for the penile sparing vaginoplasty because it specializes in non-standard gender procedures according to the Canadian outlet. Ontario's health insurance plan initially denied her request for the surgery in 2022 on the grounds that it is experimental and not available in Canada. K -C K -S, sorry, complained to the Appeal and Review Board, which overturned the decision, ruling that vaginoplasty uh, is among the 11 general surgeries listed for public coverage and that it should inherently include a penectomy, the removal of a penis. OHIP then appealed the Review Board's decision in Ontario Superior Court of Justice and expect to issue a ruling in the next few months. So we'll keep you posted on the venous surgery. It's unclear how much the surgery will cost, but the Crane Center told police surgeries range from $10,000 to $70,000, plus the travel down from Canada, uh, accommodations, recovery, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and here it is. An Ottawa uh, endocrinologist treating KS supported her request for a specific type of surgery. It's very important for KS to have a vagina for her personal interpretation of gender expression, but she also wishes to maintain Tain her penis. Wrap your head around that, people. Good luck. Anyway, like and subscribe. Mask comes off. 10,000 subs. 10K likes. We're rocking on the shorts. Check them out. People are loving it. Like, subscribe. Tell me what you don't and do like. I love it. Sigma Tiger, signing out.